Today on Ask This Old House. This backyard could really use a patio. I'll make that happen. So one option I like for here is gonna be a concrete paver. Very good looking and also very affordable. They come in different sizes, shapes, and colors. I'll share what works great in an outdoor kitchen. And there's one more I just want to show you because this was super fun. Just showing off here. I'm just saying. Oh my gosh. Okay, Tommy, what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking of building a bench like this. It's like a combination shoe rack bench. My wife wanted something to put by the door. If somebody comes in, a place to put your shoes. Okay, let's see, Tommy. It's pretty good, that finish. That's a water-based finish. All right, welcome, Mark, to our backyard. We added this deck last year. We did a complete renovation of the house. This is a great deck. Thank you. Um, we have two kids, one on the way. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, we just wanted an area where we could come outside and play during the day. Yeah, we realized pretty fast that the kids, all under the age of five, running around, don't want to have a grill up here. We really want to expand our living space down okay. here. So you can see that I like to grill, Chrissy likes to garden, but right now it's pretty difficult with you know, different weather, seasons, muddy, right. so we really like to increase living space down here. Okay, so this looks like a great spot for a patio. It feeds off of the garage really well, it comes off of the deck really well. Um, we do have a couple choices. We could do natural stone, which is either going to be bluestone or granite, which are both beautiful but very expensive. Okay. okay. The other choice might be brick. I'm not really feeling the brick here. It's usually in a colonial setting. This is a ranch, so it might not be our choice. Okay. Yeah. So one option I like for here is going to be a concrete paver. Very good looking and also very affordable. They come in different sizes, shapes, and colors, which by the way, when you do pick a color, remember that it may fade over time, so you want to go darker rather than lighter when you're picking out your paver. So we like affordable. Okay. Pavers great. sound like a great, great option. All right. What about size, Mark? We're a little concerned that kids want to still be able to run around, play sports, yeah. get dirty. A great question. Where we already have the size of the deck established in the garage, we feed right off of that. I think if we stay in the 8x10 or the 10x10 area, again, it's going to look like it was here naturally mm -hmm. and not really out of place. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, there's a showroom right down the road. You guys can go over there. Again, pick a color, a shape, everything that you like, and then we'll have it delivered and we'll put it in. Okay. Thanks, Mark. All right, let's get going. Hi, guys. Hi, Mark. Hey, Mark. Good to see you. All right. Looks like you made some choices. Yep. This is what we picked out. Oh, yeah. These are great. Okay. So uh, we're going to lay this in an ashlar pattern, and I can tell that by squares and rectangles. We put those together. Um, I can also see an indentation in this paper, which I like. It's what they call a cleft and it occurs naturally in natural stone as they haul it out. So uh, that's gonna be a great look. Also, I love this color, it's gonna work out perfectly. I've also called the utility marking service. They've told me that everything is out front, nothing is out back, that means it's safe for us right. to dig. So at this point, let's get going. Okay, okay. let's do it. All right. Okay, so these four stakes actually represent what we're going to have as a finished patio. So again, it looks like a great size to me. We're going to have a little pathway coming out of the garage, a little pathway coming off the deck. But what we have right now is an unlevel work area. So this is the high spot, so we're going to end up taking all the dirt from here. We're going to truck it down to that corner, which is going to bring that up, mm -hmm. and eventually going to level off our patio. Okay, okay. sounds right. great. So let's get going. All right, so I'm gonna start in this area with the pick. I'm gonna break, you guys get in with the shovels, throw into the wheelbarrow, and we'll dump it. Great. Okay. All right. How deep will we have to dig this hole? We're gonna have to go at least eight or nine inches down. Okay. And feed this area. We might be shy over there. Once we get to our depth, I'll have you run the plate compactor to tamp down the subsoil. that out a little bit. So Christy, this is what we call pack. It's actually three-quarter inch stone 
and it's bound up with stone dust. So when you crunch it up, it makes a good solid fill. Okay. Yep. So we're gonna spread it out and then we'll compact it again as well. Now you can watch this old house and ask this old house anytime, anywhere. Download our new app to stream full episodes to your tablet, your TV, and your phone. Binge on classic episodes, catch up on recent renovations, and get step-by-step -step help projects all around the house. And best of all, it's free. The most trusted home improvement information is now available on your Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, iOS, and Android devices. Download the This Old House streaming app today. Great. All right, you go that way, I'll go this way. What is this sand for? Okay, so this is our final bed of material, and this is what the uh, pavers are gonna sit on. Again, we just level it out with a rake and run the compactor over it. All right, and you ready? Want to get the screed in position. All right, Josh, look at that. Mm -hmm. Anytime you see the bubble leaning this way, that means we're up a little bit, which yep. is good because everything is pitching and flowing that way. Now let's switch the screed the long way. Okay. Which way is the bubble going to go this way? Still that direction? We're gonna, it's either going to be level or going that way a little bit. So this is great. We got the pitch coming this way, which will mean it'll go that way as well. All right, so we're just about ready to put our pavers in. Now, one of the most important things about doing a patio is to make sure it's square. So what I did to make sure it was square is coming off of the foundation. First, I had to verify the foundation, which is square, which is what I did. And then I ended up with these lines. This line is set parallel to the foundation. And I checked that by measuring off the wall in two spots. All right, so now we're going to check and make sure these lines are square, which they are. And now our first paver will go in here, and then we'll be able to run that way and run that way. And because these lines are set at our height, we're going to know we have the right height. All right, so let's get going with the pavers. Okay. All right. I'm going to start with a square paver and just line it up to my lines. All right, big one, Josh. So how much space do you leave in between these? So if you notice, go right in with it. You see those tabs? Yep. Those are made so they connect. And that's when we know we're in line. So these plastic rails are very important. They're gonna hold everything together. So we're gonna run them on the outside of the entire, pull them down with this spike. Okay. All right. All right, Christy, why don't you grab that broom? What do you think? It's great, I love it. All right, well we have one more step. This is a polymer sand, so I'm gonna dump it, and as I dump it, you just sweep it into the joints. Okay. All right. Christy, you're gonna wet it down to activate the sand. Okay. Never spray directly down, just make it wet. Oh, well, that's great. Well, all right, we're done. We just push the sand in, so just give it about an hour to cure, and after that, you guys can go crazy, do whatever you want on it. Looks great, so kids, grill at this point. All of that. Well, thank you very much, we love it. It looks All right. awesome. Great, well thank you guys for your help and thanks for having me out and good luck with baby number three for sure. Thank you. Thanks All right. Mark, appreciate you it. You got it, Josh. Want to tackle all your home improvement projects with confidence? Join This Old House Insider. 
a new streaming service from this old house, the iconic Emmy-winning series that inspired a generation of home enthusiasts. Stream over 1,000 episodes of This Old House and Ask This Old House commercial-free. Watch it all in the This Old House app and join live online Q&As with our experts. Best of all, you can try Insider free for seven days. To join, go to thisoldhousemembership.com. Hey, Jen. Hey, Kevin. What are you working on? Oh, just some outdoor kitchens. Love outdoor kitchens. I know. They really, really create a focal point. They anchor the back of the, the whole space, just that whole entertainment area. They're just, all the rage now, right? They are. I mean, it's so nice to be able to eat and cook outside. So that's interesting. Are you the new kitchen designer? The landscape designer Some becomes kitchen designer? Some so. <laughs> all right. So when a client comes to you and says, give me an outdoor kitchen, what are you telling them? Well, I ask them, how, how do they want to use the space? What kind of things do you like to cook? Are you a big griller? Do you want just a grill? Or do you want other appliances to be part of it? Smoker, refrigerator, yeah, fire, all that Yeah, rotisserie, kind of anything. So I have the clients pick the appliances and then figure out how to incorporate it in. And okay. then you have to think of style. And then you have to think of materials and, and where the placement is in the garden. So is this one of your designs? This is. That is awesome. Yeah, I love this that. Is, this is in downtown in the city. Yep. And you would wow. never know. No. Um, so in this case, obviously the stonework is gorgeous and it gives you a countertop, but all I'm really seeing is a grill, right? Just simple? This client just wanted a grill, but they wanted a lot of counter space so they could lay out and cook and entertain and put drinks. And then we also incorporated wood into this to match the fence in the, back, in the background. So it's Storage kind of a, gotcha. yeah, you don't have to all have all stainless steel. That added a nice touch. Looks like a million bucks, but obviously simple, right? Just grilling. Exactly. So other ones uh, next step up if you want to add more appliances i think usually a refrigerator is asked for next yep so storage um, underneath the grill same situation yep, now we've got the place for cold drawers. beers and drinks and stuff exactly you know you could add lights to this there's a rotisserie actually in this one mm -hmm. um, again we did bluestone countertops uh, natural stone veneer uh, but if you want to take it to the next level mm -hmm. i mean get oh, yeah. totally tricked out there and then go. it's a massive structure but you know the homeowner really really wanted all these pieces into the project so we have a refrigerator we have a grill this is a warming drawer there's the storage got your paper towel holders uh, it's ridiculously amazing and you have trash and recycling Yep. So it is a full-on kitchen, right? It's got sort of all the things that you'd have inside the house right, right there, tucked into that one little spot. Mm -hmm. So simple grill or more appliances go all the way up. The basic building blocks for these all seem to be stone it, in well, this case. Well, you, you have to set the oh, layout for it. Okay, so, so it's just, actually stone block, this yeah. is concrete block. Exactly. So once you have the, the appliances and you know your dimensions, then you you know, of course, you have to figure out layout and then also how far away are you from the house because you're right. going to need electricity and plumbing plumbed in for the grill. Which I'm seeing here. So you can see the plumber's been there. That's yep. your gas line. There's the electrical stainless steel base once that uh, protective cover's off. Exactly. Lock and then that stone veneer you're talking about. Yes. So and this, then, is, this is full-on construction. Right. I mean, just like a stone wall, you would have, to, we poured a base so there is a footing and then you create the structure with the block since you know the dimensions and then the veneer stone goes right on. Gotcha. Um, in some cases you need an insulation jacket which goes underneath the grill if you're any if you're close to wood or anything for combustibles. Yep, got it. Beautiful. Um, so that is great. We usually for countertops uh, we usually use bluestone, sometimes granite, whatever the client wants and matches their scene. So and there's one more I just want to show you because just for, this was super fun. <laughs> just showing off. So now we've got fire pit, we've got some seating, we've got dining seating, and then that thing back there. That is a pizza oven. So we followed this uh, hippie book we found from California, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we followed a, a somewhat template. Of course, we had to change a few things. <laughs> Rich hippies. <laughs> Look at that thing. That's beautiful. So it's wood fired. and they stoke it down below. This is a, a metal grade food bin, and that's where the chimney is. Good. All so. right. Well, you know who I'm calling soon. All right. You. Let me know. <laughs> I need one. It really, really makes an outdoor space. Thank you, Jen. Welcome. Okay, Tommy, what are you thinking? Well, I'm thinking of building a bench like this. It's like a combination shoe rack bench. My wife wanted something to put by the door. If somebody comes in, a place to put your shoes. Yep, sit down on it, storage right there. Are you guys on a budget? Yeah. <laughs> well, she got this online. I said, no, nah, I'm really not going to. That's a little flimsy. Yeah. I want to make something a little bit 
heavier, and I also want to change the design a little bit. Okay, so maybe get rid of the exposed hardware, beef it up a touch? Yeah. yeah. So I actually want to make it out of this material right here. This is actually straight grain fur. I like working with straight grain fur. It's good, strong wood. So fur's nice, right? Stable, but uh, also looks great. I mean, you could paint it, but if even if you left it natural, it's going to be a great look. Well, you can paint look. it, stain it, yeah, right, You'll leave a natural finish on it. And this is actually porch decking. Yeah, right. One by four. Nice. Get it at the home center. And I got some baluster stock, two by twos. It's about inch and three eighths square. We use that for the legs. And I think uh, we can get started by cutting some rough length. Beautiful. For this project, I have several repetitive cuts to make. To make sure that they come out the same each time, I use a stop on my miter saw. For each different length, I just reposition the stop and make the next cut. All right, now I need nine pieces cut at nine and a quarter inches. My stop won't come in that far. So to fix that, I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of wood, put it on here, loosen this up, slide this over, and measure from the end of this board right here over to where my cut needs to be, which is nine and a quarter. Lock it down, and I have a stop right there that I can go to. I want to create the look that the slats are mortised into each rail, but it can be time consuming to create the mortise and tenon joint in each piece. To speed up the process, I'll create a long dado in each rail and a rabbit on each end of the slats. The table saw will accept a stacked dado blade, but I'll just use a standard blade moving the rip fence over the thickness of the blade for a series of cuts. For the rabbits on each end, I will stand up each board, making one set of cuts. Now we can start assembling our end panels. Now the dados that I put in the top and the bottom of each one of the pieces, I want to make those simulated like a mortise. The way we're going to do that, we're going to insert a filler piece in the dado in between each one of the lats. So we eyeball it, lay it out so we have one in the center, and then we divide that again, center it. I'm going to put one dab of glue inside the dado. And I'll put too much because it's going to squeeze out anyways, but I'm going to put in one, push it down a little bit. I don't want to push it all the way in yet. Pull this up, put the next one in. Stand this up. And the next one up. No glue on the slats by design. Right? Not yet. We'll, we'll put it in when we assemble a piece. All right, so now that they're in, I can push these down as far as they go. And I can push them in tight so they may slide in just a little bit. OK, so there's one. Now we'll do the other side. Now our spacers are all set where they need to go. 
Now I'm gonna take it apart, let the glue set up just for a minute, and then we'll sand them smooth. And now we'll do the same thing for our shelf slats. Once the glue has dried on the end panels and the shelves, I can use a jig to drill slots for pocket screws. This is a fast way to make a strong connection. So now, so I want to put one right there. All right, so now we're ready to screw the pieces together. And rather than keep it flush with the outside edge of the leg, I like to recess it back about a half an inch. To gauge that, just take a couple of scrap pieces of half inch, put it down, put a side panel on it, and that gives us our half inch reveal. And I'll just screw it off. Flush. Ready? Ready. It's the beginning. All right, so now we're ready to set our shelf right up here. I set a gauge block, put it down like that, put our shelf in it, and again, fit lightly, put a couple of screws in it, and move our gauge block. All right, take the block out and move it up. Ready? Ready. Okay, so these are the boards for the top. We'll just leave them loose. We're not even going to glue them. Put them on. Measure back an inch for our overhang. All right. Should be an inch. We'll check it. All right, now we'll just put the legs on top, line it up with our marks, see how close it is. All right, put it on the mark down there. Okay, it's good there. Got it. Now I'll screw this side off. Now we're ready to apply the finish and we're gonna spray on a couple of coats of high gloss water-based urethane. Once that dry, we'll put two or three coats of satin on top of that. Okay, let's see, Tommy. Looks pretty good, that finish. That's a water-based finish. Yeah, a bunch of coats on there, looks nice. It's dry Look at that, that baby. Sturdy. I love it. Oh, it's, it's not touch, that but it's sturdy. not set up oh. yet. Oh, really? <laughs> You didn't want a denim finish? You are unbelievable. <laughs> it is that sturdy. Richard, what do you think? Love it. Yeah? Really Perfect comfy. height? Yeah. Good for the shoes? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's good for carrying a lot of weight, too, I see. Tommy, plumber approved. Yeah, that's nice. great. All right, well, we'd love to hear from you, so keep the letters and the emails coming. Until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. I'm Richard Thewey. And I'm Tom Silver. For Ask This Old House. Just so, so are you staying <laughs> yeah. to help me refinish this thing now? Thanks for watching. This Old House has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.